You ever been out on the lakes, taking a break from staring at the indicator, you notice a bunch of damselflies crawling up your anchor rope, or you just see them all buzzing around? Well, that can be a good time to try a different pattern. Today, I'm going to show you how to tie Casey's Dirty Little Damsel. So for this pattern, for this dirty little damsel here, I've got an RX FW561 in a size 12, secured into my vise. And to that, I'm going to attach some ADOT uni thread in the color tan. Now this is a fly that you can tie in a variety of colors, just depending on where you're fishing. Um, I kind of like to try and match the color of these patterns um, to like the bottom color. So for example, um, in places in the interior, this sort of tan ginger color works very well. Um, shades of light olive, medium olive, dark olive. Um, in like our local coastal lakes, I'll quite often see these things in almost like a sculpin olive or even like a brown. Um, is, is a very, very successful color for me um, if I'm fishing more of our coastal waters. Again, in the interior, more greens, these sort of tan shades. Um, really big fan of one shade by uh, Nature Spirit. Uh, the damsel nymph olive is a great sort of watery kind of washed out one but like i said tie these in a variety of colors to suit um, the lake that you're fishing if you don't know what you're going to encounter then it's great to have some options just so you're not stuck looking at a bunch of green ones when brown ones are hatching or you know vice versa all right so i've got my thread attached um, i guess one thing i'm going to cover is damsels and dragonflies both have very very prominent eyes um, and you'll see eyes represented, represented, sorry, eyes represented um, on a good majority of the, of the patterns that are available out there. So I'm going to make some mono eyes here. Uh, you can get some eyes that are made on a stick through hairline, I believe it is. Wopsy might even do some too, um, but I always like to make my own. I can play with different colors of mono. For this one, I'm just going to use green, uh, 30 pound, and I just have them in a pair of fine, in a, a set of fine tweezers here. Um, you can use your tying scissors as well too to kind of hold it in the middle. I just like something that's kind of a fine point. That way I can melt the, the mono so that it gets quite close um, to the tip of the tweezers without having a giant distance in between the two eyes making a really, really um, unnatural looking bug. So all I'm going to do is just hit these guys with the lighter and I'm going to let them cool with the eye facing straight down if possible. If I hit it with a lighter here and let it cool, what's gonna happen is the gravity is gonna take over, that liquid puddle is gonna sag and you're gonna have funny looking eyes. If you don't apply too much heat to them, um, you can get a real translucent kind of look on the, you know, it won't, it re won't really affect the color of the monofilament. If you heat it up a little bit more, um, you'll kind of get a brownish kind of amber hue to it and then if you keep at it um, eventually they'll go black. If you want black for that particular pattern by all means go ahead uh, with this color I'm looking for more of a brownish kind of color so I don't want to get it insanely hot so that I burn it and make it black. If you give it a chance, you'll set these things on fire and it'll just turn it in. So I'll let those cool for just half a second there. I'm going to bring my thread back to the front and I'm going to tie these eyes in. Now I just put a couple of loose wraps on there just so that they sit for me. And I'm going to turn these over so that they sit on the bottom of the hook shank. Um, I just want to have the center of gravity low on this fly. Not that I think that these are heavy enough because it's going to make it turn over. Just if you start piling enough material on top of the shank, then things can flip on you. And all of a sudden your fly doesn't look like, or doesn't swim the way that you want it to. And you're not necessarily getting the presentation that you want to give those fish. A couple of figure eight wraps there. Just to secure that into place. And 
and a little dab of Zappa Gap. Not mandatory, but just helps lock that all in. Now I just applied a little bit too much there, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this bottle up and down so that the glue drains. I'm going to press on the bottle a little bit, and I'm just going to stick that there, let go, and suck the remaining glue away. I do that with UV cures too if I over apply. And I'm just going to clean out that eye so that I've got somewhere to put my tippet once that's dry. So like I was saying, sorry, for the tail, Wopsy Wooly Bugger Marabou in the color ginger. And like I said, it was just for that dye lot. And I want to leave that marabou tag. I want to trim that close to the eyes um, so that I've got a nice, clean, um, symmetrical body. I'm going to overwrap this with a, with a biot in a second. So I don't want to have a big bump here and have it step down. If I would have cut uh, those tags towards the end of the fly here, I would have a big step and it's going to create um, an uneven body. So for tail length, I'm going to go about the length of the hook shank and I'll just pinch that off with my fingers and that even might be a little bit heavy uh, for a tail but I can always pull out a couple of fibers when I'm on the water if I need to slim it down a little bit if I don't like how it looks in the water um, I can't add more when I'm on the water I can always take away though but that's not bad um, less is typically more when we're tying damsels they are like I said they are quite a, a small sort of thin um, fragile looking nymph compared to some of the other stuff that we see in the water. So next for the body, I'm going to take a Wopsy Turkey Biot in the color tan. Again, color to match. I'm going to take, I've selected one Biot off of the stem there and I'm going to tie it in by the tip. And again, a little bit of glue just for durability. These biots, they're not the most durable material in the world, but what they lack in durability, they make up for in their fish catching ability. They look really, really cool in my opinion. One of my favorite materials to tie with just for the realism factor. So I've got that captured in a pair of hackle pliers just to help me wind this forward. Watch out for that hook point. And you can see the natural segmentation that that, that sorry that that biot gives you. I just wish I could find a turkey with some longer ones, but that's okay. So there's my abdomen. Next, I'm going to take some ring neck from Wopsy, that's in the color bleach ginger, ring neck tail. And I'm just gonna select a small clump of that to make a, to build a wing case. And I'm gonna tie that in forward so that it's sticking up over the point of the eye, or sorry, over the eye of the hook. Wraps behind the eyes. 
secure it in front as well, right behind the eye of the hook. Now for my next step, I'm going to build a thorax using a hairline UV ice dub in tan. And I've also taken just a little bit of the marabou that I'm using in the tail. I've taken just a small pinch, chopped it up, and mixed it in with the dubbing just so that it matches the, the, the tail color as well a little bit better. So again, less is more. We want to give this a, as natural of a profile as we can, so I'm going to make a pretty tight dubbing noodle here. You can use a little bit of dubbing wax if you find that that helps. And we're just going to twist up or dub in a, a thorax there. Again, both sides of the eyes, figure eight wraps. I'm going to take that pheasant and pull it back over, flattening down that wing case over the back. And I'm going to trim that a little bit but not quite all the way. Just to imitate the wing case and the wing pads there on the back of the natural nymph. From here, a little whip finish. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the thread here. Kind of got to act quick when you got glue on the thread. I almost glued it to my whip finisher. <laughs> but that'll lock it all in place so it won't come undone on you. And now just to help imitate some legs, I'll just pick at that dubbing just a little tiny bit with my dubbing brush. I don't worry about the legs a whole ton, just something there. Um, I think the, the nice long wispy wiggling tail is what they key in on the most. But yeah, just a little bit there. And there you have it. There you got my dirty little damsel. Um, like I said, super effective fly for me. Um, tie it in a variety of colors. If you're looking for a damsel nymph pattern or just, you know, haven't even tried them at all, that is one that I would highly recommend. Again, that ginger kind of tan color, olive, brown. Um, I like to fish these on typically an intermediate line. Um, sometimes I'll do it on a full floating line with a long leader if the fish are taking them in quite shallow. And this is a, a pattern that will quite often anchor up in shallow water and bring it in towards the shore. These things will naturally migrate towards the shore, towards those pencil reeds and stuff they can climb up on and hatch. And those fish will really key in on them coming in into the bank. Um, so a great way to fish those, give them a try. And uh, yeah, I think you're gonna like this one a lot. Like I said, my dirty little damsel. Thanks for watching everybody. Smash that like button if you like this video. Leave any comments, if you've got any questions, you know where to find me. Check us out online, www.c-run.com. And you can always get updates if you follow us on social media. Thanks for watching everybody.